BioBalance HealthCast episode 249, The Way to Health is Through the Stomach. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. One of the oldest things that I remember hearing people say about love is uh, a saw, a conventional aphorism that the way to a man's Any heart, definitions? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> the, way, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Mm-hmm. And so the, the implication being that if a woman was a good cook, then a man would fall in love with her and they'd live happily ever after. Those are the old days. Those are the old days. <laughs> uh, but, but it brings to mind what we're going to be talking about today mm-hmm. because you've been doing some, as you often do, uh, research on current scientific research. You've been researching the research. And you found a series of articles about uh, an increasing focus over the last five years about the importance of the bacteria in the gut mm-hmm. for developing neurotransmitters, for controlling mood and health, as well as digestion and uh, immunity. Even I um, mean, who knew immunities in your in your gut? Well, and and about the importance of having our kids play out in the dirt. That's right. I mean, and, I mean, all this ties together. <laughs> so if you'll bear with us today, we're going to be talking about new research that shows the importance of a rich and varied flora of bacteria within the human gut. And for mm-hmm. those people that that uh, are obsessively sterile and clean and limited in what they consume, the bacteria <laughs> environment of their intestines diminishes uh, mm-hmm. down to a fewer strains. And that puts their health in jeopardy. It does. So, it does. So, and so it, it makes them and it makes them gain weight. So they've the most recent study, there were several studies that came out all at once, mm-hmm. and they were done by different researchers, but Scientific American and then Endocrinology and different well, different there were two journals. Articles that you referenced mm-hmm. in the research you sent me. Mm-hmm. One was an article called Gut Instinct. Mm-hmm. Uh, Instinct by Eric Seberg in the Endocrine News. Mm-hmm. And the other one was Artificial Sweeteners Get a Gut Check in Scientific American. So you right. can check those articles yourself right. if you're interested by, by what we're talking They're very about. good. They're very good articles, but they tie together one from a more scientific view of the interesting fact that we live symbiotically mm-hmm. with the bacteria that live inside our intestines from the minute we're born. We get bacteria coming through the birth canal. We get bacteria from breastfeeding. We get bacteria from playing in the backyard and eating dirt and mm-hmm. and doing all those things children we used to do. I don't know if children still do. My daughter did. Give the but, dog a lick of the sucker, take a lick of the sucker. Right. Give the dog a lick. Right. All the things bacteria. that maybe 20 years ago were, oh my gosh, you know, if I would, you know, let the dog lick my child's face, people, oh, how can you do yeah, that? Well, yeah. that's giving her some bacteria and the dog's saliva kills the bad yeah, stuff. The same women that's, that do that though, they get uh, aghast because the dog licked the kid in the mouth. They will lick but Kleenex <laughs> wash the kid's face. Well, it, it is, you know, you, you give your child your bacteria, so oh, they okay. kind of so have the same They have flora. the inside track on that. Right, but but these bacteria aren't just, oh, bacteria, they, they digest protein, which is what I was trained in medical school, that, that basically your intestines is just a garbage disposal. Well, now we know it does everything. It makes hormones through these bacteria. It lives symbiotically with another group of organisms that must be varied. They must have lots of different types of bacteria, lots of different types of of, uh, yeast that grow together. And that's how we make hormones like serotonin and dopamine. I didn't believe it five years ago when they started doing research on this. I just didn't have enough information. But now they know that the bacteria makes our feel-good hormones, Hmm. the hormones that make us happy instead of being depressed. So the source of some of our of our mood is from our intestines that goes that circulated to our brain and then we are happy we are hosts individually you are and i am mm-hmm. and everyone else is to millions of bacteria that reside in different places in our body mm-hmm. and we can't live without them it's a symbiotic we relationship. can't live without them believe it or not you can't live without them and they can't live without us right so over over all the years that he, mankind has been around, mm-hmm. we have been developing these different 
groups of bacteria that have they've they've multiplied and they have mutated along with us so that they serve us well so so one of the ways they discovered this is they <laughs> did something called a fecal transplant right i know and that sounds awful but they did they, it's kind of like an enema with so, somebody else's stool <laughs> well, why would they do that in the first place well i mean who's sitting around their office one day going you know I think we'd be interested to take some of your feces and put it in her. Well, the beginning of all this was when they had they had um, sick people who were sick. They gave lots of antibiotics to, mm -hmm. killed all the good bacteria, and then they had chronic and well, terrible they well, diarrhea. Transplant stem cells. They they suppress all the bacteria growth that they can and put you in a sterile environment, and. They don't want anyone coming in that's going to Oh, stem introduce. cells for cancer. Yes. yes. Stem cells Sorry. to bone marrow. Yes. So different kind of stem cells. I'm kind of, okay. Yeah, I saw you went blank. Yeah. I'm not sure no, I'm right. I, no, stem, all went through this. Right. And, stem yeah. cells for cancer where they, they get rid of all of your own white cells. Yeah. And so you can't fight, fight infection at right. all. Right. So they have to get rid of some of, a lot of your bacteria too, mm -hmm. because those, you have no way to keep them under control. So... That's that's one of those things that we do as doctors. Mm -hmm. We make something bad happen to make something better happen. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes people are in the hospital with terrible infections, staph and other infections that we give them all these antibiotics for. And then the, their intestines are, are completely blank of good bacteria. And they have a couple strains of bad bacteria, which makes them sick and doesn't provide serotonin, dopamine. It doesn't help them with digestion either. So... So then they said, hmm, how do we get this back? We have no way of repopulating that they were trying probiotics orally. They were trying um, lactobacillus orally. It wasn't working mm -hmm. because the, it, was it wouldn't. The digestive it was process, going through the. And that was killing it. Right. But it, it actually, you can take these things orally, but in these particular patients, it didn't work. Okay. So they started, they said, oh, let's find a patient who's really healthy, who's got great bacteria in their intestines and take some stool from them and place it into the patient that needs it and actually repopulated these people's bacteria. It was usually somebody they were related to, an aunt or a sister right. or a, a healthy, genetically, genetically alike yeah. person, right. but it worked. And they were like, Whoa, and it worked in so many different ways that they started studying this. It not only made these people healthier really fast, it also helped them lose weight. It also balanced their hormones. It also did a lot of things that we didn't know the gut could do. So then they started studying it. So this is, it may have been more than five years. It seems, you know, time flies when you're having fun. So, I mean, but, but this is how it started. And I remember in residency, that's 40 years ago, we right. give people all these antibiotics that they had a terrible infection and right. and they'd have terrible diarrhea for months and we there was nothing we could really do about it right. so this is a this so is a they give these other fecal transplant suppository type things mm -hmm. and that helps clear up the diarrhea and, and fires up the engine of the lower intestine that's right we'll that's right but that's how we learned what every all that bacteria does right and how good it is for us we awesome. had no idea i mean i always thought bacteria E. coli, all the things that you consider coming from the intestines deadly. Yeah. are deadly, but they're only deadly when they're overgrowth, that when they're growing out of control or they're in a, they get into your bloodstream, which yeah, doesn't happen through your intestines. The, the intestine is contained environment. Right. So, so this is, this is one of those really new things uh -huh. that at first you go, ugh. And I, at first, I didn't believe because that's not what I had been trained. But but I'm open minded to all these new ideas. And when I started looking at it, it made sense. Well, for instance, uh, people that get the stem cell replacements for cancer, mm -hmm. one of the side effects that they sometimes notice is that if you had allergies to this and that before mm -hmm. you had the stem cell transplant. Now that you have somebody else's stem cells making mm -hmm. your red blood cells and your white white blood, white blood you're, cells. You're, your allergies change. Mm -hmm. You may develop something uh, allergically that you weren't allergic to before, and things you were allergic to, you're not. And, so and your blood type, type changes. Your blood type changes. Every, I mean, so many things are determined by our white and red blood cells right. from our bone marrow. Yeah. And so the bone marrow transplants is is basically what they're getting. So they're getting somebody's all their immunity from somebody else. Right. 
So that's giving that to them. I don't know how that integrates. I, I have to plead ignorance on that, how that integrates with the bacteria. Well, except that so, you, you get the genetic development, I mean, from, from a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Whatever my genetics are, are mixed in all of my cells, including my red blood cells, mm -hmm. and my living environment, healthy or not. We, for instance, we were talking about transplanting bacteria from the stomach with these, these fecal transplants. Uh, they, they find, for instance, that, uh, they were, and I don't remember the specific case, but we were mm -hmm. talking about it, this obese woman right. who couldn't lose weight. Mm -hmm. And part of the what the research is beginning to show is that people that are really obese have a much uh, lower number of, of bacteria, of floral Bacteria. Not, bacteria. not the total number, but they had the less variety, variety less diversity right. of their bacteria. So they, they took a fecal transplant from a thin woman mm -hmm. and put it in the obese woman, and, and she, the obese woman immediately began to lose weight. Right. And so that opens it was up a whole new amazing. strain of research for dealing with obesity by manipulating uh, bacterial environment in the lower intestine. And if... Bacteria make our hormones, right? So, I mean, neurotransmitter hormones. Right. Then they may be making the hormones, which they think that they're making that leptin and the other hormones that affect our hunger mm -hmm. and affect how we are metabolically active. Okay, so many of our mm -hmm. hormones and liquid communicators in our body that we don't even have names for yet. Right determine how our metabolism works, and that is determined by the diversity of our bacteria in our intestines. Yeah. One of the reasons they did that, though, was because they were looking at lap band patients, patients who are morbidly obese mm -hmm. that go in for surgery and they have their stomach made smaller or they have their st a part of their stomach removed. And they at first they thought, well, maybe it's a hormone from the stomach that when we remove it or we tie it off, it doesn't, right. it's not produced, so they're no longer as hungry. But they found that people lose so much more weight than can be accounted for by just a smaller Volume stomach. Control. Yeah. Right. So they they started investigating all of this, and then they found it had to do with the types of bacteria in their intestines. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the smaller stomach. It's the smaller stomach and everything it does, which gives you a greater variety of bacteria. It it has to be something about the stomach killing off or the acid or something in it right. killing off the bacteria. Right. And then when you, you remove that part or you tie it off, then you don't make that anymore. So you can allow all the bacteria that you need to grow. But people lose weight in out of proportion to a smaller intake of food. So that's where that started. That's where they started looking at bacteria. They, that's what they start. They started doing this backwards. They even did it for for an aunt and a and a, um, and a niece. Right. They transferred. Then they held some of the bacteria from the obese woman and right. they put it into the thin woman, and she started like becoming thin. obese. Yeah. Interestingly enough, all these bacteria killed off all her good bacteria, and took over. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I don't know how you reverse that, but I mean, I guess you just re-transplant. Yes. So, um, but this is an easy thing. It's like an enema. I mean, not easy, but it's easy. It's an enema. You have to be sure of that. You have to be sure that the donor doesn't have communicable diseases, hepatitis, AIDS, um, any immune, any immune or, or any yeah. cancer cells or anything. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't want to receive a, a tra transplant from Somebody like that. Right. So they actually have designated donors of poop. I mean, can you believe that? <laughs> Put that on your tax. Yeah, that are, you know, like they have designated donors <laughs> for platelets because they have, they have never had CMV or they've never, you know, right. they don't have any kind of, of um, active infection or weird immune um, cells. So they do do this for blood. Now we're doing it for poop. Mm -hmm. Now, if you wanted to do this yourself and not do a transplant, but get the good bacteria, you can take orally, you can take uh, lactobacillus, which is available over the counter, and it is a, like a pill or a 
granule that you can take every day. And lactobacillus is a good yeast. It kills off the bad yeast, it kills off the bad bacteria, and it's a good yeast, and it helps populate your intestines with other bacteria that are good. So it takes the restriction that a bad bacteria might okay. might cause, so it can actually help you lose so, weight. So as a physician, working with people that are trying to lose weight mm -hmm. who are not morbidly obese, I mean, mm -hmm. you're not eligible for... Uh, bariatric surgery unless you're more than 150 pounds. Overweight. Right, and I would never suggest that. It's a risky surgery and you, right. you have to balance risk for benefit. So right. someone who's not morbidly obese, I would not suggest that surgery. But you might suggest taking this lactobacillus. And, um, you know, probiotics, that's and the probiotics. same idea. Have, so I've heard you make that suggestion. Right, people. and probiotics are just a group of really healthy bacteria that you can take orally that survive the stomach mm -hmm. and actually can help repopulate your intestines. I think everybody should do that after they take a course of antibiotics for anything. Or maybe they just do it every day mm -hmm. just to help their the bacterial flora of their, of their intestines be more normal. Well, and one of the ways that the research is beginning to veer about antibiotics is because they've been concerned for the last 40 years over people taking antibiotics too often, too regularly, to the point that we're developing super resistant bugs, mm -hmm. that the antibiotics that we can give outside the hospital aren't killing it. Even in the hospital. And even in the hospital. So one of the elements of this research is how to trick the super bug by introducing into the body its enemy. So right. it'll chase mm -hmm. after that, mm -hmm. and not, and, and then the, while it's busy fighting its chemical enemy, and, and I don't know the terminology for what that is, but then the regular antibiotics seem to have a resurgence in their ability to fight it down and, That's right. and decrease or kill off the superbug. You know, you get, a, you get a bacterial infection when your own immune system isn't working properly mm -hmm. or is suppressed for some reason, which could be stress. It could be another infection. It could be that you're taking a medication that suppresses your immune system, like all of the medications for rheumatoid arthritis and the, yeah. and the um, uh, rheumatologists, the, all those drugs that rheumatologists give that mm -hmm. decrease your immunity. So in general, an infection is exposure to a virulent bacteria, not what we're talking about in our intestines, right. but something that is that can cause infection and not do something good for you. So a virulent act bacteria and the lack of ability to fight it inside your own body. So one of the ways I try to do that with some of my patients who say I'm sick all the time, well, testosterone improves your T cells. They, they, we give it to right. AIDS patients to improve the ability to fight infection. Right. So testosterone is the first step. But then sometimes we need to add some other things. And besides probiotics, I add colostrum from cows. Colostrum is that pre-milk Anybody who's breastfed knows what that is, kind of a clear, it's like a clear milk that has all of the active live cells in it. Well, they dry it, they put it into a chewable capsule that you, or a chewable tablet that you take as like a food. Mm -hmm. And if you have poor immunity, that really helps your intestinal immunity. And it really helps you fight Reduce virulent infections. bacteria. Yeah. So it, it, it's like a fortress. It builds a fortress around you, mm -hmm. and and uh, your gut bacteria are helping, and your uh, not taking certain drugs help. But if you come in contact with this, not everybody gets sick from a vir virulent bacteria or virus. It's a. It's some people get sick. Some people have the have the poor immune system and get sick. So, <laughs> so we don't want to have to treat people with antibiotics. I'd rather prevent it. I'd rather have everybody's immune system be really good mm -hmm. instead of have chinks in the armor where the bacteria can, or, or uh, viruses can come in. Okay, so check me on the science of this, but the nickel version of what we've been saying to you I need that. is that the variety of bacterial strains that you have in your system, in your, the intestines. Larger, in your intestines, the larger that variety is, the greater potential that you'll not be obese, that you'll not get cancer, that you'll not develop allergies and uh, and they'll be happier disorders, and you're going to be happier. Your neurotransmitters are better. So, so, those of you, especially moms of young children, who <laughs> are frantic and fanatical about sterilization, back off. Right. 
kids need some dirt. If your kids are healthy, kids need some dirt. I mean, that's that's say I don't say that. Grown up every need child. some dirt too. Right. I mean, you people who have dogs have done study on that, on this. People who have dogs that lick their faces are actually immunologically healthier than people who don't. Now, I've had people who don't want my dog licking their face. I well, understand yeah. that. But, I mean, my dog licks my face, wakes me up every morning by licking my face. I get a little shot of whatever the bacteria is in my dog. <laughs> whatever but else that dog's been licking. I haven't been sick for over that. a year, yeah. so I'm I'm thinking that it's working. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.